Now on Denver 7 News, from a warm and sunny weekend to an Arctic blast heading our way, we're taking you step by step through the big changes on this weather action day. Plus, uncorking a new push to put wine on grocery store shelves. I think that wine is more of a is more of a grocery item anyway. But not everyone sees the wine glass as half full. It would put us out of business. And from an alley to an apartment, how a Denver man was able to get off the streets and turn his life around. You know, I wish this for like everybody that's a, that was in my situation. On this weather action day, let's get things started by saying we hope you made the most of this amazing weather today. Yeah, like these guys living their best life with a dance party at Denver's Cheeseman Park. They have something to dance about. Temperatures in the 60s. That's right, 60s. But this time tomorrow, think snow and cold. Meteorologist Stacy Donaldson joins us now. Stacy. Goodbye, 60s. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, 60s. Uh, hello, Arctic air that's coming our direction. So today we hit 63 degrees for an afternoon high. By the time we get to Tuesday, we'll have snow and a high of only 12 degrees. This is a very powerful cold front headed our way. It'll be dry and warm and sunny for today, as obviously we've seen cold front hits for Monday, bitter cold by Tuesday, and we'll have about three days worth of snowfall here as we get into the middle of the week. We already have some weather alerts that have been issued for Monday. So the winter storm morning starts Monday morning here for Northwest Colorado down through Aspen toward Tyler Ride. Everything shaded in pink. Now the purple winter weather advisories in the higher elevations as well. That includes Eagle and Vale up toward Leadville and down toward Gunnison. Now otherwise we have hot weather down through southeastern Colorado tomorrow. So high fire danger for that area with a red flag warning. As for Denver tomorrow we'll be at 48 degrees. The cold front moves through throughout the day. Temperatures will drop and then we'll see snow by the evening evening and it just gets a little worse from there. I'll have all the details coming up in just a few minutes. All right. Thank you, Stacy. Here in Colorado, you cannot buy wine at the grocery store. You got to make a special trip to the liquor store. Now a local group wants to get those bottles on grocery store shelves by urging Colorado voters to put it back on the November ballot. Denver 7's Patrick Perez is live in Denver. Patrick, liquor store owners say this could kill their business. Yeah, Jacqueline, and let me explain why. Let's say you come to a grocery store like King Supers, you get your food, you get your wine, and now that means you have no more need to walk inside of a local liquor store here unless you're buying some hard spirits, and that's going to have a lasting impact. Shopping for wine in Colorado could potentially get a lot easier. The Colorado Retail Council is working on a ballot initiative to give voters a choice this November to add wine to places licensed to sell beer and make home delivery easier. Shoppers we spoke with are in favor of the idea. I think that wine is more of a is more of a grocery item anyway. It would make sense too. I mean, I don't see why they couldn't since they sell beer. Since 2019, grocery and convenience stores in Colorado have been able to sell full strength beer, which used to be limited to liquor stores, and that's made a big impact. Our sales in beer probably dropped by 50 percent, if not around there, 40 to 50 percent. George Gotch's family has owned Capitol Hill Liquors in Denver for years. But he's worried giving grocery stores the power to also sell wine could kill his livelihood. It would put us out of business. Right now, wine can only be sold in liquor stores like George's or up to five stores per grocery chain around the state. They go buy their groceries, buy their beer there. Now they're going to buy their wine there. Why come here? George says it's already hard competing with grocery stores because of their cheaper beer prices. Small mom and pop stores like his need people to come in and shop even if the prices are a bit higher. What are we going to sell? Spirits only? Vodka, bourbon, scotches, things like that. We can't survive on that. George hopes the idea doesn't get much traction so that shoppers can continue to count on stores like his just as much as they count on them. So the Colorado Retail Council says it's been working on this for more than 10 years. It has until March 23rd to kind of nail down some of that ballot language. And then once the title board approves it, they need to get 140. Uh, 124,000 valid signatures, I just say, before it gets to November's ballot. We'll see what happens and we'll keep you updated. For now, we're live in Denver. I'm Patrick Perez, Denver 7. All right. Thank you, Patrick. A man who lived on the streets of Denver for years now has a place to call home. Denver 7's Christian Lopez shares his inspiring story and the steps he took to make it happen. Opening the door to his own apartment is something Marco Struck hasn't been able to do in years. Not too long ago, he called this home. This is where I used to have my tent right here. I had it all set up. It was a huge eight-man tent. Marco was on the street for five years, and things kept getting worse. Everything in my life at that time, 
um, just seemed like it was going bad and I did try to commit suicide. And if it wasn't for a jogger, you know, in the park or whatever that cut me down, I probably would have succeeded. After that, he decided to change his life around, reaching out to different groups, and that led him to Richard Dilworth. I got hired by the Athena group to come up here and do some work in setting up some camps, and uh, somehow uh, Marco uh, was able to navigate himself to me. I came and met him out here at this beautiful Cheeseman Park. He really showed a lot of um, intention as far as uh, moving forward. Marco says he sent countless emails to different organizations and eventually got on a wait list for public housing. Well, that call came at the end of January, letting him know that he had gotten his own apartment here at this building. Honestly, it's a breath of fresh air. So I love it and I, you know what, po dreams and possibilities and everything like they say, they are true. And I, you know, I wish this for like everybody that's, that was in my situation. Marco now has a new zest for life. He's enjoying his new apartment while also looking for a job. He looks better physically. He's smiling more. He's, he's happy. I'm very blessed. Very, very blessed. And it just, you know, looking at this right now, it's like, whoa, kind of like gives me chills, you know, but in a good way. In Denver, Christian Lopez, Denver 7 takes a lot of determination and hard work to do what he did. Christian, thank you. Well, before Marco was accepted into public housing, he was staying at one of the city's safe outdoor spaces. To learn more about the housing resources available in Denver, visit our website and click on this story. We have a link inside with more information. The need for teachers is still critical in many Colorado school districts. Take, for example, the Poudre Valley School District, which has more than 100 openings right now. The district will hold a hiring event tomorrow to try to fill those positions. It's from 9 to noon at Fort Collins High School. Staffing shortages are causing major problems in the state's largest school district. A recent survey of Denver Public School teachers showed many are exhausted by their workload and many are thinking about quitting unless something changes. Denver 7 spoke to one teacher who says educators are being stretched thin right now. He also says that having to make constant adjustments to the classroom is taking away from their priority, the kids. So when we're entrusted with the future of our community, it's just a lot of pressure to make sure that we are getting it right. And we know in the past that we haven't always gotten it right. Adam says he would like to see smaller classrooms to help teachers focus on teaching as well as higher pay for new teachers. And if you head out to rural areas, the school staffing shortage just gets worse. Morgan County school officials are getting creative to try to fill vacancies. The ideas include bringing aboard J-1 visa teachers, increasing classroom sizes, bumping pay as much as possible, and offering better benefits. All of those have helped, but it is not enough. We always struggle to get subs and quality subs. On any given day, we have between five or eight substitutes for our entire district that are active. So uh, with a school district of 250, that's, that is pretty shy of what we need. And the Morgan County School District is also considering a four-day school week. That will be up for discussion after this school year ends. A Douglas County Court will hold the first hearing in a lawsuit against the Doug Co School Board this week. The lawsuit claims the Board of Education violated Colorado's open meeting laws with the discussions leading up to the firing of Superintendent Corey Wise. The hearing will take place Friday afternoon. U.S. officials say lower level Russian soldiers have been given orders to proceed with an invasion of Ukraine. Still, with no official military movement, the U.S. is hoping for a last-ditch effort at diplomacy. That's right. This information is consistent with statements made by President Biden and De Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, who said they believe Putin has made the decision to attack. ABC's Aaron Kontursky is in Ukraine with the latest. In Ukraine's restive east, more worrying signs Russia has no plans to back down. Russia-controlled rebels made new and unsubstantiated claims of coming under threat from Ukraine. The U.S. and its allies believe they're lies, so Russian President Putin can justify an invasion. He's been very deliberate in terms of assembling the right kind of combat and combat support capabilities. The kinds of things that you would need uh, to conduct a successful uh, invasion. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin told ABC News Russia amassed enough firepower to take the Ukrainian capital, Kyiv. If he employs that kind of combat power, it will certainly create uh, enormous casualties, uh, you know, 
within a civilian population. Russia has denied plans to invade, but after test-firing nuclear-capable ballistic missiles, Russia extended military drills in Belarus instead of withdrawing its forces as planned, raising fears of an imminent invasion. Leaving a security conference in Germany, Vice President Harris said there is still hope for a diplomatic solution. We are looking at a moment that is a very decisive moment. We are talking about the real possibility of war in Europe. Today, French President Macron tried by phone to dissuade Putin from an attack. But according to the Kremlin, Putin expressed serious concern about a deterioration in eastern Ukraine and blamed Ukraine for it. We still hope and wish that President Putin would make the decision to take the diplomatic path. President Biden meeting with his national security team on the deteriorating situation. Diplomacy is the hope, but the U.S. believes war is the reality. As Secretary of State Blinken put it today, everything we are seeing suggests that we are on the brink of an invasion. Aaron Katursky, ABC News, Lviv. Queen Elizabeth has tested positive for COVID. The 95-year-old is experiencing mild symptoms, expects to continue light duties this week. Now, her son, Prince Charles, contracted the virus at the beginning of this month. Buckingham Palace says they were together just a few days before she tested positive. All right, a former Denver police officer breaking down barriers during a racially tense time. How his legacy is still inspiring change. And damage, stolen and even repossessed. A Colorado man is taking a major car dealership to court after finding out his new car had a hidden past.